Well, greetings, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever in the world you are today listening to this webcast. Uh, we're delighted that you've joined us here. This is Aaron Rudger from Keynote, and we are going to be talking today about real user monitoring and how real user monitoring can really help you to elevate the conversation between IT and the business. Um, and so let's just kind of deal with a few of our housekeeping items. Hopefully we're coming in loud and clear for you today. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about web performance and why in the current environment that a lot of our customers, yourselves, as well as other folks that we talked to today, are dealing with complexity that, that makes it a real challenge um, to really drive web performance as a feature, as a requirement in your business and how in that increasingly complex digital delivery chain, uh, real user monitoring can be a powerful tool and weapon to help elevate the conversation and bring um, understanding and alignment between IT and the business. Um, this is really all part of what we think uh, is the value of understanding performance in context because we think that that really makes a difference to your business. Um, and so we're also going to be just kind of talking about performance in context, not only as it relates to real user monitoring, which we think, again, is a very important um, uh, kind of arrow in your quiver, but also uh, synthetic monitoring, the active monitoring solutions that Keynote has been um, well known and, and uh, hopefully uh, valued within your organization today in delivering. We'll do a live question and answer. Um, we're going to be doing it through the Adobe Connect uh, interface today, so please do provide your questions to us. Submit them at any time during the presentation and uh, um, we'll get through as many as we can at the end of our prepared content. And any questions that we cannot answer, um, we'll go ahead and, and make sure that we get back to you offline to deal with any other lingering outstanding um, uh, queries that we can, we can help address. So, Today's webcast, we're, we're scheduled for probably about uh, 45 minutes or so in terms of content and a demonstration. Um, that should give us enough time to deal with a lot of those questions and uh, we'll definitely be sure to get you out before the top of the hour. The webcast is being recorded, um, so we'll make sure that you'll be able to access that recording later so you can share the, the content with your colleagues um, disseminated around your organization and reference it um, uh, uh, on your ready schedule. You can use star zero at any time if you've joined us on the conference line, the audio conference bridge, um, if you are encountering any audio issues. Uh, otherwise, of course, you, you're um, welcome to listening to our audio through your computer speakers using the VoIP option. And we will also provide you with access to the slides that we'll be delivering today, as well as a few additional helpful links that can help you get a little more information and understanding about Keynote solutions and real user monitoring in particular. Um, lastly, we do recommend that you view this in the full screen mode. You'll notice that there in, is a, a little icon in the upper right hand corner of your Adobe Connect uh, interface and you can use that to both expand as well as collapse the interface so that you can um, uh, view the presentation and most importantly the demonstration when we get to the live demo part um, in its best resolution possible. Uh, but again, if you do want to submit questions, you will have to, to uh, collapse that environment so that you can get access to the Q&A panel or pod. All right, so with that, um, I want to introduce our expert from our product management organization today. Uh, Abel Gonzalez. Abel's been with Keynote for a long time and has been uh, helping to deliver both customer solutions directly out in the field as well as uh, drive our product strategy and our product delivery for our monitoring products. And Abel is going to uh, start today by talking to you about real user measurement in uh, performance management. So Abel, welcome to the webcast. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Um, we wanted to um, talk about the uh, real user role in, uh, in performance management. Um, as we move into um, larger channels uh, with multiple devices, multiple uh, experiences, um, we can see that uh, 
customers are coming to the site uh, in many different ways, through their desktop, through their um, mobile device, through their tablet. And within those mobile devices, um, there's a lot of fragmentation. This is uh, just an example of the fragmentation just on the um, Android browsers themselves. Um, there's a lot of research that has been done, um, and this is a very common slide where uh, performance does affect your your user behavior, uh, your end user goals. The faster you are, the more chance you have at converting a customer, giving um, a specific um, a specific view of uh, of performance, um, get, getting them to to view more ads on, on your site. And what real user uh, measurements does is bring all that information into context. When you have your synthetic tests that are, are monitoring the health and availability of your site as well as performance, having that real user me measurement come in and provide the context of how many people are, are on your site, how many people are being affected, and how are those user behaviors changing because of the change in performance. Are your users abandoning? Are they exiting a specific page that is slow in your checkout process, or are they not able to log in and, and going some, somewhere else? Uh, and in, at Keynote, having that synthetic as well as the real user monitoring together provides you that full, and full view of context of, of performance with your um, business objectives. Well, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the context, Abel, and talk about just the diversity of, you know, the, the you know, the kind of the modes and the channels of access um, to our digital assets, right, that we're all trying to, to, to ensure are delivered in a, in a highly performant way. Um, but, but the context piece is important, right, because it does make a difference in terms of, of, of uh, business relevance. And I think that um, that's an interesting thing that, you know, one of our discussions that we had recently at a Velocity conference was around this notion of, um, you know, the difference in, in how you think about and how you measure performance, um, both in terms of what kind of we as performance practitioners mm -hmm. um, and performance enthusiasts, the way kind of we have really begun to kind of peel away at the different levels of the onion in terms of thinking about performance, but how that can kind of maybe lead to a bit of a divide in the way that the business mm -hmm. understands the relevance. Yeah. Well, I mean, for, for the business, nobody gets excited about a second decrease in performance. They get excited about a 10% increase in sales or in ad impressions. Um, that's what's going to get people excited and talking, not just the performance number uh, in its raw form. We have to give it the context for people to really pay attention to, to that effect. And so it seems to me that the kind of the really critical link that can help connect two things. What is the user doing? What is the user experience? And we've talked about user experience. You know, Keynote was really, I think, um, uh, engineering, helping to move the, the notion of metrics around end user experience from what just gets flown over the network in terms of bits and bytes, which we had historically called page load time, to things like, you know, time to first pay and time to interactive page, and those are useful for user experience. Um, but it's interesting because there's also a user behavior aspect to it that seems to be, I think, that really important um, uh, connect, connection point or mesh point between um, what, the, what uh, the business is trying to accomplish. And I think we just um, lost our connectivity, but we can start uh, talking about the um, the difference in, in the language that um, IT uses versus business while we um, go in and get um, get our internet connection back up. Yeah. So um, when we talk, when you start talking about um, the line of business versus versus IT, line of business cares um, a lot about um, the growth, um, what the conversions are, how you're retaining customers. Uh, when you're starting to look at um, the user path within the site. Um, are, are those transactions converting uh, or, or, or not? Uh, and then the technology behavior, the, the people that, um, that talk about the, the page load time that are uh, responsible for keeping the site up and, and performing, um, we start using metrics, metrics as time to interactive, um, time, to, time to first paint. How long is a user really waiting um, for, that, for that first impression to happen? 
And um, that's the that that's the bridge that that we want to talk about. And how do we correlate? And how how do we talk about these two things that each each side uh, cares about in the context of performance? So I think that. Um, it'd be interesting to ask the audience, you know, kind of maybe how they're thinking about uh, some of these questions, right? And so um, what we want to try to do is to launch a poll, and hopefully everybody can see the poll. We've, we've just moved the first set of questions um, into, the, in, into, the, in, into the Adobe Connect environment. And again, if you can't see a little square item on your screen that's a poll, um, feel free to minimize or, or kind of collapse your view so you can get access to that polling question. So the first question is really around whether or not you are, in fact, tracking key user behavior along with your web performance indicators. And so if you could just go ahead and submit your answers to that, um, we'll, we'll give you just a moment here. And um, we'll go ahead and, and maybe what we can do is uh, just give you Another moment, and then we'll go ahead and close the poll. Let's see what the results are. Let's broadcast those results. I think we need to just broadcast those results. And yeah. here they are, and it's interesting, right? So actually, that's a really great sign. Most people are, in fact, uh, uh, tracking their, their user behavior right along with their performance indicators, and that's really great. Um, uh, we'd like to see that number, of course, be above 50 percent. Um, but uh, so a follow-on question to this would be um, the kind of metrics, in fact, that you would be uh, in, uh, that you'd be looking at. So for those folks that were certain that they are um, tracking those measures of, of behavior right alongside of their your web performance, if you could kind of help us with more specificity around the kinds of metrics that you're um, tracking. And uh, for those folks that are not sure, um, maybe you can just kind of maybe hazard a guess. So if we can just bring that second polling question in. Our, we'll just drag that in there. So hopefully now, again, you see the follow-up question, which is specific to the the various and sundry kind of metrics that are fairly common um, in terms of measuring user experience. And this is a multiple choice question, so feel free to select more than one. Um, and uh, uh, very interested to perhaps even follow up with you offline if, if you've selected the other category um, as to what those additional metrics are. That would be interesting for us in, in terms of our uh, research and development of thought around this topic. All right, so I think we've probably got some good responses at this point. Let's go ahead and broadcast those. Well, some pretty even distribution, session length being perhaps the uh, the exclusion to that. So that's mm -hmm. a, kind of an interesting interesting takeaway yeah, here. I guess um, session length is something that um, a, a more of a media side would be um, I see. tracking. Mm -hmm. Um, given that the more ads you impress, the more money you make. <laughs> right. So um, that's, I think that's, that's a, a metric that, that gets to, to be more important for, for media, um, people that make their business by the content that they deliver on their, on their site. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Great. Well, um, this is great feedback. And hopefully you guys are, are uh, this is resonating with you a little bit. Um, because the the interesting thing about all of this is that as Keynote, you know, is continuing to innovate, and we're going to obviously show you some of this new innovation that we're very excited to share with you today um, with regard to real user monitoring. But as we continue to develop our, our, our products and our solutions, um, you know, we're really thinking about things in terms of the holistic optimization of your digital business and all the digital assets. Um, and of course, today we're really focusing in on on performance. But really, digital business optimization as as a whole, we think, involves quality as well as performance. Um, helping you to to contextualize that with regard to comparisons, benchmarks, scorecards, if you will, and then really being able to help you leverage that information, that data, through an analytics layer that really drives insight, right? And today, many of you may be taking advantage of our 
of our performance analytics organization, our consulting team that actually helps customers um, on an engagement basis to do that. But, um, you know, we're really uh, thinking about ways that we can accelerate and expand on that analytics vision to help you get even more um, uh, insight from the data that we're, we're collecting. Having specific metrics around what really drives the the customers to engage more with your site, buy more, uh, do all of that. Um, the way I think about it is uh, in your organization you have uh, a lot of marketing, a lot of different um, people that their job is to bring that customer to your site. So you spend money, you do the campaigns, you bring them into, into the site and once you have them there, these tools provide you the right information to make the best experience possible once they are in your site. You don't want them to be frustrated and leave uh, when you have spent all this effort into getting them to that, to that site. Absolutely. So it's not, only, it's not only the right optimization, but it's the timing of it as well. And so I guess that's kind of a great segue into kind of the exciting part of what we want to talk today. So Abel, maybe you can introduce folks to, um, to our next generation real user monitoring. Sure, and we're calling this next generation because it's, it's part of the transformation of all of the performance tools that, that Keynote has been providing for, uh, for so many years. Uh, and this represents um, the brand new uh, platform that we are building um, to be able to deliver all of these insights, to give, give you performance in the context of user behavior, uh, and then combine everything together so you have a holistic view of your customer's experience. <coughs> Um, with this, uh, with the new real user uh, monitoring um, product that uh, Keynote is, is, is launching, um, we have focused uh, a lot on the real-time component, sub three second data stream from the person that visits your site to the moment that it's visualized in, 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 in the dashboard. We've been um, working with our, our early beta customers that have been informing a lot of, uh, a lot of the development that has been uh, ongoing. Um, to be able to show performance as it relates to the user engagement metrics as bounce and exit. You, when you're talking about a checkout process, it's really important to see where their customers are exiting if they're not fulfilling that, that, um, that full transaction. And then look at that uh, behavior in the, in the context of, of the performance of every page that, um, that you see. Um, one other thing that um, Keynote has been very mindful of in, in, in in the past is looking at performance not just holistically but also in the different channels that, that you're selling. So looking at the performance and behavior of a desktop user versus a mobile user versus a tablet user and then having that performance visualized in the dashboard where you can start looking at all of your different channels, how they're performing and how they're behaving. Um, that is uh, one of the, uh, the, the main goals of, of our real user monitoring product. Um, the beauty of it is that it's ba is, uh, built in entirely on our RESTful API so that it's open and extensible. Um, you can visualize the data, you can um, slice and dice it any way you want in this, in this dashboard, but you can also access that stream directly from any of the, your other reporting dashboards and be able to start um, using that data along with your other key performance indicators to get a full view of your customer's experience. <coughs> So uh, as I mentioned, looking at your, um, your performance across uh, different channels, what are your uh, OS um, users coming versus your, your Android versus um, maybe uh, Windows phones. Uh, I've heard a lot of retailers talk about the, the value of a specific segment of users. If they're using a specific device that is a lot more expensive, what that segment uh, is, is experiencing on your site versus versus other uh, other customers. And uh, one of the things that um, we're very excited about is that tying that performance with the behavior. Um, building these custom paths so that you can see within a session that that subsection of where you're either going to make a new customer or um, or lose them, look at that transaction as a whole within, within that user session and looking at the performance of how long does it take that person to check out um, what is the performance of each page that they hit during that checkout transaction? 
Uh, and you can do a lot of this with, uh, with synthetic, but synthetic just gives you a specific path of, of what you believe that, um, that user behavior in that, in, in that uh, transaction should take. When you're looking at the data from real users, you're really getting that experience. Maybe you're, um, you're having an, um, a page that is popping up that might not be accounted for, things like that that can affect the, the performance and, and, the, and the experience of, of that user. So that's, you know, an important differentiation. I think maybe we just want to make sure that, you know, we kind of convey here with regard to real user monitoring for our customers that are more familiar with or active or synthetic monitoring that we've, you know, been providing to them for a long time. Um, you know, for somebody who's not really familiar with real user monitoring, like, how does how does it work? What's different about it? Um, well, it, it works um, via a JavaScript tag um, that is deployed on, on a customer's website. Uh, and that tag takes advantage of the new interfaces for the browsers. So the browsers themselves are reporting all of that information um, to you. So you're not doing any specific um, coding. It's just the, the browser interface brings all that information over. How long did it take to do first pane? How long did it take for the page to become interactive? Uh, and then that, 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 those performance metrics um, are very similar to what we get in synthetic, because in synthetic we also track that time to interactive, time to first pane. Uh, and then we're able, able to look at that performance in, in all the context of real users versus that um, cleaner room environment where you have very uh, good control of exactly what you're uh, what you're measuring. Well, that sounds like a lot of data. It it, it kind of is. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like that could be that would that would really generate a lot of information, especially for our high traffic customers who yeah. have very high traffic websites and yeah, web properties. Yeah, we start talking about individual resources, third party content, all of that information. It, it starts becoming um, a really big data problem. And uh, as I mentioned, um, what we're calling it next generation real user monitoring is because it's built on this new next generation big data architecture, which I am super excited about because I'm kind of geeky that way. But <laughs> having that information flowing in real time, having correlations inside the database, and then having it all be built on an API that can be flexible and customizable, it allows us to collect all of this all of this information, create, collect real users, collect synthetic, um, having it go flow in real time to our brand new big data architecture, and then being able to serve it out as part of the My Keynote portal, uh, where our customers have been using for, uh, for years, um, but also have that direct link into BI tools, where maybe you don't want information that's proprietary to your business to, be, to get out there, uh, but you still want to make those correlations of how are my end user business goals being affected by performance of a specific section of the site, a specific pr promotion, uh, and being able to get that data and mesh it together in those BI tools is incredibly um, exciting and, and flexible for, for yeah, customers. Yeah, I think that the general trend that we've, you know, that I've heard, that I've witnessed, that uh, I think we all have been seeing um, in the business is, is a move toward open platforms, right, mm -hmm. and, and extensibility because um, the power of the data that we're able to collect is, is amplified on so many, you know, multiples when, when you can really understand it relative to, you know, yeah. other data sources and, and gosh, it seems like that would provide such great context. Yeah, and you know, it gets us to the point where um, and third party management is, is one of the big pain points of a lot of companies because you don't have direct control over what they're doing. But now with having this data in uh, a more open platform, you can start tracking and benchmarking all of your third parties across all of your different properties, across all of your different pages in a real instantaneous way that if you're putting out fires in the middle of Black Friday, you don't want to wait an hour because in that hour, you could have already lost um, several thousand dollars or millions of dollars. Uh, I think there was a, uh, a metric that Amazon put out that each minute that they're, they're down, it's um, several thousand dollars. $64,000, yeah, I think, something. a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so having that real time, and that's why we focus so much on that real time component of seconds because at that point seconds do count mm -hmm. whether or not you're um, you're going to hit your targets or not. Right. Well there's a lot of different ways we can also imagine you know um, 
using the data that would be collected in this big data fashion. And, and we'll save that, perhaps, the exploration yeah. of that for, for a future <laughs> um, keynote tech talk. But you know me, I can keep talking about data all yeah. day long. No, absolutely. Um, one thing that I, I just wanted to highlight was, you know, it, uh, it's, it's really super exciting to have, um, I think, from Keynote, a new source of understanding, you know, the performance of your user experience um, via your real users, right? But, you know, it's also important to understand, well, what does that mean relative to my synthetic uh, measurements as well and the combination of those two? And um, I think we, we really believe that combining real user monitoring with active monitoring or synthetic monitoring um, just really helps you to understand the best of both worlds. And it gives you a level of, of analysis. It gives you a level of, of uh, uh, not only reactive um, triaging, right, of issues that come into that, that are being experienced, but also a proactive ability, a proactive stance. They empower you to have that proactive stance um, to really use the data to help make changes in advance of them having a negative impact on user experience. So um, the combined real user with active measurements on this new open platform is, is definitely uh, an important thing and one we think is really unique in the marketplace today with Keynote being such a strong player, obviously, in the active side. Um, I, coming back to something that I said, like nobody gets excited about one second or two seconds, but when you t put in the context of user impact, I was very excited when um, our engineering team um, came up and said, you know what, I have this really cool idea of how we can start um, measuring these um, things together. Uh, and one of the things that um, for real user monitoring will <clears throat> allow us to, to do is uh, when, you when you get an, an, an alert, a synthetic alert, not only know what the impact is on, from a technical perspective, but having that real-time component of the of RUM, we can show you as well how many people were on the site attempting that transaction at the time that the performance degradation happened. So it's no longer, oh yeah, it's kind of slow. It's now, it's slow. Our exit rate increased from X to Y. And now you have context of the urgency of having to fix something um, that is metrics that the business understands because they don't want people to leave, they want them to convert. So It's really interesting. I love this visual. Um, this is a great visual, Abel, that, that you've developed that, that helps to kind of just in a very quick, easy way conceptualize the two, right, and the power of working th together. So exactly as you're just explaining, the, 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 the breadth, right, of the real user data um, having that be aligned through a focusing process that active data or synthetic monitoring data or measurements and tests provide, um, it's just a really powerful combination. And I think that that really just nice and cleanly describes um, how we think about performance in context. So um, especially in the context of user journeys, which leads us to another poll question we just wanted to ask you guys. Um, if, uh, if you are today using Keynote to monitor, to script and monitor multi-step transactions, so we're talking about, you know, common transactions that workflows in a business like, um, obviously, shopping and adding something to a cart, right, and, and checking out, or um, if you're in financial services, maybe uh, quoting a stock, right, mm -hmm. going through that process, or um, maybe if you're in a subscription business, uh, signing up for various packages and, and, and exploring subscriptions. Um, we could go on and on about the various business kind of workflows, so to speak. But if you're doing that today, um, how do you determine these user journeys? Is it based on what just seems to make sense from kind of a common sense standpoint? Or um, is that prescribed? by, you know, other people, other inputs within the business? Um, how are you basically informing the, 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 the determination of these business transactions? So if you could take a moment to just answer the poll, we'd appreciate that. I think we can probably maybe wrap it up and share the results. Yeah, I mean, after spending uh, five years uh, in the field talking to, to a lot of my customers, uh, there's really two ways that most, most uh, companies do it. Is um, they look at the web analytics, um, mm -hmm. just find what are the most um, 
uh, most transited path. Um, but uh, one of the things that most people do is go with the um, <clears throat> flow of least resistance. So how can I get from point A to point B in the least number of pages because maybe you have some budget to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, that's usually how, uh, how these transactions are, are, are done in my experience. And, right. and it's exciting to, to look at the real user monitoring because now you have that shortest path possible from A to B and then all of the, well, people are actually doing this and maybe you're not monitoring a page that is causing additional um, issues with for the customers and so you, you get that insight. You, you could find exceptions, so to speak, mm -hmm. right, to, yeah. the, to the path and, and use that to inform your, your definition. That's, um, uh, there's a lot of great synergies that, that can be taken advantage of here. So I think at this point, uh, given that we're um, about a half hour into our presentation, it'd be appropriate for us maybe to just switch over to um, a live demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and let you take over, Abel. You can Great. drive from here. Yeah, um, I mean, we've made people wait 30 minutes. I think it's, it's time to yes, be able absolutely. to, to show. Right. right. So as Abel is transitioning to the, um, to the live demonstration, uh, I just wanted to remind everybody that it's uh, now's a great time if you have any questions to go ahead and submit them into the Q and A panel. Um, we will uh, we'll definitely make sure that we we get back to you on on all of those and, and address them here at the end when we kind of wrap up our our, uh, our live demo and the prepared um, the prepared content. So um, we're going to have to make a quick adjustment here to our screen sharing. We'll okay. token now. Yes. So uh, right now we're um, showing you the real um, user dashboard. Um, this is measuring keynote.com since um, we, um, we like to use our, our own products. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if you really want to experience the, the real-time nature of this, um, you can start navigating at keynote.com and immediately see the changes in the number of, in the live feed of, uh, of your page views. Wait, I can actually go to the keynote.com, I'm going to pull it up <laughs> on my phone, I'm going to do that right now. Um, <clears> and uh, front and center, uh, one of the areas that, that, that we're showing is the performance versus the, the bounce rate. And I think that's one of the, the highlights of being able to show performance and context. Uh, and uh, each one of these, these widgets, um, you can customize. Um, look at the data segmented by the different channels. Um, we're showing you some summary metrics, how many people are on their phone in right now in the last five minutes on your site, tablets, desktops, um, what is, how many active sessions, what is their average um, UX time. <clears throat> but then you can start drilling in and looking at this information by device type, by browser or operating system, uh, and then start um, customizing it. Um, <clears throat> what you're also seeing is the um, future of the My Keynote dashboard itself. Uh, we're moving into a fully API based. So here you can add individual widgets. You can customize it and make it, make it your own so that um, you have the, the ability to um, <clears throat> create, let's say, um, I'm going to um, only focus on the mobile experience and then give me that, that data um, um, for just, just for, my, for, for my, my, my mobile customers. So um, <clears throat> um, we're also um, able to segment and um, look at the, at the data uh, in each individual page view, um, look at the number of, of pages as well as um, what their um, bounce rate and what their performance is. We can see here that this one page has a 98.83 bounce rate. Um, and that's actually expected because this is the scripting tool landing page. So when you, if you're, um, if you're using Kite, that screen that comes up, we're, we're tagging that, we're measuring, uh, and then we know that that's mostly an inform informative screen, so we would expect that, um, that type of behavior. Um, for our real user monitoring, um, we're tracking um, the uh, session duration, we're tracking bounce, uh, and we're tracking uh, exit rate. Uh, and we've used the definition that Google Analytics um, has for all of these metrics so that we're not creating something new from scratch. Um, we're using uh, industry standard definitions so that you can start um, comparing and looking at your performance um, <clears throat> as, as, as it relates to, to the different 
uh, to, to the different metrics over the page. So if you're um, in your checkout transaction, you definitely don't want to see those pages have um, high exit rates, um, et cetera. So um, in here, um, all of these widgets um, are, we can modify, we can um, move and um, position um, other places. Uh, and here we have our, our globe that shows us exactly where people are accessing, um, accessing your website from. Um, obviously, the more traffic you have, the more exciting this dashboard becomes. <laughs> um, uh, Keynote.com doesn't um, command that level of traffic, but uh, um, we have uh, several beta customers that have traffic in, in the multi-million pages um, a day, uh, and we're able to capture that information in real time with the same speed uh, in, uh, in, in the new architecture. You know, as part of the marketing team, I do definitely take this as an indictment on our ability to generate awareness and interest in our website. So I have to take this and work on it a little bit. So this is great data. Of course, you can't take action. You can't make changes without having, mm -hmm. without having insight and information. Um, so again, we can um, modify and look at the performance by country, performance by browser. Um, all of these um, dimensions we can, uh, we can change so that we have a dashboard that fits your needs and, um, and, and your, your metrics that, that, you're, that you're tracking. That's great. It seems like the flexibility here is, is really, it's, it's, it's wide open and uh, it's easy enough, too, mm -hmm. that it's not something that you have to spend a whole lot of time and energy kind of trying to figure out how to, how to do a configuration of a specific widget on, uh, on the dashboard. They, they look pretty straightforward. So if you have any questions on the specifics of the dashboard, um, I encourage you to send those over via the, the Q&A um, interface. <clears throat> Is there any limit to the number of widgets maybe that people would add or? Um, no. They pretty much do whatever they want. Yeah. Correct. They pretty much, uh, as, as we saw, we can um, have multiple dashboards. So you can have a desktop dashboard versus a tablet dashboard and have all of your different metrics. Mm -hmm. um, um, viewable in, in, in that context. Right, right, great. Well, it looks really powerful, and, and I've definitely been hearing you know good things from the beta. Um, we've gotten good feedback from the customers who have uh, who have been participating in that. So um, actually, maybe what is you know, what's really good is to transition into kind of like where are we with the with the project, and and how can customers kind of start understanding or getting their hands on this. Yeah, so um, where we are is um, engineering and myself are not getting a lot of sleep lately because we are um, coming up on our um, GA date of December 18th. Um, so we're, we're launching this. Um, we've been working very closely with um, a handful of our beta customers that represent um, leaders in, in their fields with a lot of traffic and, and it's been great. Um, to be able to do weekly drops and modify the dashboard based on what they want to see. Um, <clears throat> we're um, launching this um, uh, next week, uh, December 18th, will be available for all Keynote customers. Um, something that we're also excited about is if you're currently a Keynote customer, you get this access to this product for free for the up to the first um, one million page views. So if wow. you want to take it up for a spin, um, look at it. It's part of the synthetic monitoring um, suite, of, suite of products that um, you can afford yourself of. And then in 2015, we're moving very quickly. We're looking um, at and having more enhancements, tying the synthetic and the RUM data together um, even better, looking at the resource timing. Um, and um, so I see one of our... Um, someone raised their hand. Um, yep. Live interactive audience participation. We love it. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Hopefully you can, you, um, the, uh, the issue is not something necessarily on the screen, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely get over to you there. See if we can address our question. Um, I, you can probably just use the Q&A box because um, I don't know exactly how to unmute a specific line, um, um, but um, 
uh, when do you expect page grouping to be available? So um, page grouping, um, we are um, putting that into, into the system now. Uh, and it should be uh, available to be visualized um, in, in January um, for, uh, for transaction tagging and, and, and grouping. Great. Um, we're also looking at capturing uh, resource timing so that you can manage all of the third-party um, tags and third-party content uh, from the real user data as well. So the general takeaway is we're, we're still in the beta period now. Um, would there be any reason why somebody at the end of the day today couldn't just raise their hand and say, hey, I, I want to go ahead and try it right now? Yeah, no reason at all. I and mean, we, we want people to, um, to use it and we want the feedback. That's um, one of the main um, drivers for us is as we launch this new product for Keynote, um, we were very good at knowing uh, our synthetic side. Um, with, uh, with RUM, um, we've, we've, uh, we've been very grateful to um, for our customers that have <clears throat> really um, helped us to, to build this product. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's bulletproof and, and we feel good coming into our general availability release date that, that, uh, that this is going to be a great product that's going to add a lot of value. Um, maybe what we can do is just kind of talk about you know, in, in terms of taking that action, right? If you did want to um, understand and and uh, and really take advantage of the power that real user monitoring can provide to you, um, what I would suggest is that you definitely take an opportunity to interface with your primary contact at Keynote. That might be your account manager, it might be your customer success manager, it might be you know somebody in our consulting organization. Um, give them a, a quick call or s just shoot them over an email and, and let them know that you're interested. Um, we, can, we can, as Abel suggested, uh, move you into the beta program today still. Um, if you want to wait until the GA time, that's fine. But what we would actually recommend is that uh, you, you at least get into the beta and really understand it as a proof of concept and take advantage of the fact that um, you know, the beta comes with really no strings attached, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, just take advantage of an opportunity to, uh, uh, to really give the product a spin. Um, the only string attached is that you probably will get myself or some engineering calling you uh, to get some feedback <laughs> and, uh, and information from, from your experience as you use it. Yeah, that's, but that's always a, a happy conversation <laughs> and it involves you, Abel, for sure. So, um, uh, yeah, and then the, the, you know, lastly is that we do have some really interesting incentives that uh, our sales organization is really um, excited to share with you that, that basically relate to, um, uh, to our year end. Of course, we're trying to close our, our, our fiscal year on a high note and uh, um, you know, we, we want to we really help kick off your experience with real user monitoring in a very positive way with some of these incentives. Um, you know, we didn't really talk about tag management and we, you mentioned the tag earlier in terms mm -hmm. of how we accomplish getting, um, uh, 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 you know, taking the measurements, but maybe you could just talk really quickly about the whole tag management process. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so um, with, the, with the help of our, um, our beta customers, we've, um, we've also reached out to the tag management um, solution vendors um, where they're adding um, the keynote tag as part of their library. So it'll be very easy for someone to just um, um, switch it on using Insighten or Telium or Signal. Um, Keynote, we use a, um, Google Tag Manager. It, it took all of two seconds to, to deploy. <laughs> um, so, um, but if, if it needs to be a tag that is approved and, and vetted by, by, by the tag management vendor, uh, we're currently working with them to, to be able to, to add, be added to the, to the library. However, just like any other tag, you can just deploy um, in directly on, onto the system. And, and uh, I, I know that you guys have been doing a lot of measuring and testing of the tag itself too to just ensure that it doesn't arbitrarily impact performance, yeah. right? Well, so if we're the, the, the monitoring company that's telling people that they need to take control of their tag, our, our tag is not going to be uh, the one that's slowing you down. We've, we've done some benchmarking. Um, well, we've also have distributed the tag around the world. So if someone is accessing your site from from Sydney, they'll be able to get a tag locally uh, and have that beacon locally in country without having to 
um, to go back to, to the U.S. or, or other, other locations. So um, we've heard from uh, other companies that have, that have benchmarked our tag and, and other tags as well that um, performance is um, un it's under 100 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. um, it's asynchronous, so it doesn't, it doesn't really impact the user experience. Um, and um, yeah, so we have um, very good success with that. That's great. Well, so I think probably now is def it would be a good time to look at um, uh, responding to some of the questions that have come in. Um, I definitely encourage you, if you haven't had an opportunity at this point to ask a question, go ahead and submit that through the Q&A panel. Um, we'll make sure that we, we address uh, all of them as, uh, as quickly as possible. Um, and I already answered the first one that yeah. came in, which is uh, how, does the, how does the tag impact performance? So, Good um, deal. Under 100 milliseconds is, um, is what you um, would expect. Okay. And um, I think what I'm going to do here is uh, switch over just a moment. Uh, Hang on a second. Bear with us. Um, maybe you can uh, just, um, was there another question that came in as, as I'm kind of working through the, the document um, here? Yeah, there's, um, um, oh, can I use the APM system? Uh, and the answer is yes. So we talked a, a lot about the, um, the openness of, of the system. So being that it's, it's a browser-based run, instrument anything. You don't have to uh, modify your current APM implementation. It's all data that's being collected from the user experience side, um, where um, information such as the um, performance of third parties, all of that get, um, <clears throat> get reported. Uh, and then with your APM system, you can um, use the Keynote um, REST uh, interface to bring that data into the system or um, and, and visualize it um, that way. Great. And uh, do we have any other questions um, about the... No? All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Well, I think, um, you know, it's always good to, uh, to end early, give you guys some time. So what we've done is we've just provided to you a couple of um, a couple of additional resources that you can follow on after the, the presentation. Um, and of course, these will be also available even in the recording. So um, uh, you, you should be able to have access to all of these documents as well as links. Uh, the presentation slides, as you can see, are in the uh, download today's presentation box or pod. And then, of course, you can click on the additional links in the Learn More section. Um, so with that, I want to just thank you, Abel, for thank presenting you. today. This is great content. Hopefully everybody got a really good flavor for uh, the, the power and value of RUM. And um, with thank that... Thanks to everyone also for joining us. Yes, and thanks to the audience today for joining us. Um, again, we've recorded this, so we'll follow up with you off, offline on how to access all these different assets. Um, we appreciate your time and attention, and if there's any other questions, again, we do highly encourage you to reach out to your account manager, your customer success um, advisor, and uh, with that, we'll go ahead and close the call. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you.